I serve a church that uh, we started 12 years ago with recovery in its DNA. Within the first three months of our first worship service, I stood up on a Sunday morning and I shared my own story of recovery. And I told folks that I hoped one day we would have a recovery ministry inside our church. At the end of that service, eight people, eight different people came up to me and said, I need to talk to you this week. I've never felt free to share my story in church, but I need to share it with you because I want to be part of the start of this ministry. So since then, recovery has been very much a part of our church. And I just want to share with you as a lay person who knows almost nothing about, you know, the whole DNA of recovery, but I, I really want to share with you how we have at least brought the role of transparency into the life of our church and how that has enriched our community life. The first uh, lesson that I would share is that testimonies definitely help to spread the culture of recovery throughout the life of your church. And so for our 12 years, we have shared in worship literally countless testimonies. I think the, the, the art of the testimony has been largely lost in the midst of worship. And I want to I wanna pray for a recovery of the recovery testimony. Um, so we teach people as one of our um, sort of ongoing continuing ed opportunities, we teach people how to give a testimony. And it's a simple thing. We ask them first, tell us about your life before Christ. We tell people, please don't spend most of your energy there because if you spend most of your energy talking about how much fun you had before you came to Christ, you just make us all want to go have a drink after we hear your story. But we do want you to tell us who you were before Christ. And then we want, to tell, want us to tell you, or we want you to tell us what happened the day all that changed. And for some people that's a process, for some people that's a moment. We just want to know what it was that caused you to change and to change your focus from the, the world to Jesus. And then tell us what's your life like now. So your life before Christ, your life when Christ entered your, 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 your story, and then your life now. And uh, we get people to do that. We ask them to share it between seven and 10 minutes. And people have a really hard time, addicts especially, have a really hard time with boundaries. So, but, but getting them to bring their story down to that seven to 10 minute story really helps them to focus on what's most important. So begin to share testimonies in your church. The second thing I would encourage you to do is to have times inside your worship service where you simply offer people the opportunity to share moments of glory. And in our worship service, because we have a culture that supports recovery, it is amazing to have people stand up in worship and say, I'm six months sober, or I'm, um, I just celebrated my year and got my chip last week. And we, we praise God together with them. And that's a huge thing. Having a, a group of people who go into a local jail has helped us to extend recovery ministry into, the, into folks who aren't there yet. We, we go, we share with the gospel with people in a jail, and we always leave information about Mosaic so they know there's one church they can come to when they come out that will support their recovery, uh, that will be community for them, that will be a place where there is no shame in Christ. And that for us at Mosaic has been a mantra. There is no shame in Christ. So your story, while it may once have been a point of condemnation for you, now it is a point of redemption. There is no shame in Christ. Another just piece of information that I like to share with people who are exploring recovery ministry is to remember this, that relapse is part of recovery. So we don't, um, we don't encourage people to go back to step one when they relapse. You know, if you're running a race and you're running around a track, or uh, you say you've got 15 laps to make, around a tr uh, to make it around a track in order to win a race, if you're on lap number 10 and you fall down, nobody asks you to go back to the starting line and start the race all over again. They tell you to stand up right where you are, and even if you end up in last place, finish the race you started. And so our culture at Mosaic supports the place of relapse 
in the life of a recovering addict. We understand that you may fall down every once in a while, but we ask you to get back up again, keep running the race, and we trust that this time, when you stand up and begin to run again, you'll run a little farther than you did last time. One final word about recovery, and that is the role of leadership for a recovering addict. I believe holiness is the right of every Christian. And I believe leadership is inside of every person. And so we have developed a, a leadership, develop a kind of a leadership um, incubator at Mosaic that raises people up who've never had the opportunity to lead before, gives a, just kind of calling the potential out of them. And out of that, um, we've seen some recovering addicts um, find places of remarkable leadership in our church. Uh, the, the director of adult discipleship at our church now was once a meth addict. One of our trustees was once a, a really rough pothead. And um, so we trust that God can, truly can, make all things new. And it can happen in an, an environment where there is no shame in Christ, where we understand that relapse is part of the life of recovery, where we support people and raise them up in holiness to become leaders.